Thank you all. Great to see you. Glad to be with you. Thank you for having me, and thank you for the work that you all do. I think we have the best lieutenant governor in the whole United States. He is great. He presides over the Senate, as you know, so we've gotten to know him very well, and he's just a great guy. Um, I wanted to say you are so fortunate to have Justin as your leader here in Yadkin County. He does such a great job. And Jake Parker, Justin asked me, he said, you, you know uh, Jake? And I said, I see more of Jake than I want to see of Jake. He hangs out at our offices all the time. And not that we don't enjoy seeing him, but even the nights where we were working late, working all night, voting into the next morning, we take a break, come out of the chamber, there's Jake. Don't you guys ever go home? He said, not until y'all do. <laughs> I think they're afraid we might do something that they don't like, so they stay there just to watch us. But they do a great job representing you. Jake and his colleagues are always there, always working hard for Farm Bureau and for the issues that are important to all of you and to all of us. So thank you for that. I wanted to go over um, a couple of things. I wanted to go over the budget a little bit. And Jake hit on the Farm Act. He went through a lot of good stuff in the Farm Act, but it was there was a lot of other stuff in it too. Um, a couple of things uh, that I wanted to bring to your attention. Um, that Farm Act also exempts uh, closure of hog lagoons from requiring the use of a professional engineer. Now we don't have a lot of hog farms here in this area, but that's a really big deal out in the <coughs> eastern part of the state. Um, we also, in that bill, allow emergency workers to receive workers' comp when responding to non-fire emergencies. Because oftentimes our firemen from all over the state will go to a disaster relief area when the flooding happened out there, when the fires were going on. In the, and so this gives them the opportunity to be covered under workers' comp, which I didn't know that they weren't, but if they're not fighting the fire or whatever they would normally be doing, they aren't covered when they go to handle another emergency. It also authorizes wine sales at farmers markets in North Carolina, which is a big deal to some of our Yadkin um, wineries here, so we're glad about that. Um, also allowed extension of exemption for sales tax for certain farmers. So there are a lot of good things in there. Uh, abandoned livestock amendments were added to that bill. And this was mostly for, um, mostly horses, but if, because uh, a lot of horses are boarded and then they're abandoned. And the uh, stable owner can't really do anything with the horse. So this, uh, we did include in there that it allows for the sale or transfer of livestock that has been abandoned. So some really good things that weren't anybody's real focus, but certainly helping a lot of small farmers across North Carolina, so we were really glad to get that done. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about our budget, because I know you always hear that we cut funding everywhere, and it's never true. We, we spend more money every time, so I want to tell you that off the bat. We did have a, a sizable, the Senate, um, the bill, Jake did a really good job filling you in on how that process works down there, and it is, it's, it's, um, it's making sausage, and you don't really want to see it from the inside, but that's exactly what it is. Um, a bill starts out one way, and it changes over and over and over again. And sometimes by the time you see that final bill, it isn't even in the same category that it started. So um, you have to really watch everything that's going on. So Jake's right to stay there all night and watch what's going on. But um, the Senate started out with almost a billion-dollar tax cut that we were giving to the citizens of North Carolina. It's your money, you earn it, and we feel like it needs to stay in your pocket. You can spend it better than we can. Um, the House did not go along with that, so we had to compromise, but we ended up with a um, $530 um, million tax cut, so that was sizable. The uh, income tax rate was cut from 5.49 to 5.25 in 2019. It goes to that next year and increase the amount of income that's exempt from state income tax. 90,000 low-income families will be removed completely from the tax rolls, so they won't owe any income tax in North Carolina at all. 
So that's going to help those low-income families that are struggling. And um, we're, we're proud of that. We want to continue to cut those taxes to let you keep your money and spend it the way you want to for your family. Um, the corporate income tax was lowered from 3% to 2.5. Uh, and we're going to keep bringing that down as well. With the changes that we've already made, North Carolina has been ranked number one or number two in almost every category over the last two years. So the policies that in starting a new business, the best place to live, the best place to work, we are continuing to move up and our policies are working. So we hope to continue that trend to keep lowering taxes, rolling back regulation, which is huge in North Carolina. It's all huge all over the country. But North Carolina had uh, more regulations than our neighbors. And that's usually our biggest competitors are South Carolina, Georgia, Virginia, Tennessee, our surrounding neighbors. Um, our bill uh, um, allocated $10 million over two years for a bonus program for veteran teachers. So um, we want to reward those teachers that are really doing a good job. And Dr. Martin can tell you, he knows who his best teachers are. He could name them, uh, he wouldn't hesitate to name who his best teachers are. And we want those teachers to be recognized as such. We want them to be able to earn more money by producing um, better results in their classrooms. Um, we also increased, had a $700 million increase in education funding. And we're going to continue to make sure that our average teacher salary will be $50,000 this year. Uh, it will be going to $55,000 over the next two years. That will be the average teacher salary. So we're getting our teachers' um, incomes up where they need to be, and we're going to keep trying to do that so we can keep those teachers in North Carolina and keep the best in our classrooms because it's so important. Uh, we offered step increases for um, uh, teachers, uh, highway patrol, clerks, magistrates. We um, fully funded K through 12 community college and public university enrollment growth. Um, we provided 27 million over two years for new pre-K slots and that will eliminate 75% of the wait list. We're never gonna get rid of the wait list because there are more people coming on it all the time. So there'll always be a wait list. But 75% of the current wait, li wait list will be eliminated. Um, we have a huge opioid addiction crisis in North Carolina. It has been, um, it's nationwide, but it has been um, eye-opening for me. I serve as chair of the healthcare committee and I had no idea that we had such a crisis in North Carolina as we do, but it is real. And so we put a lot of funding into that. We're upgrading the control su uh, substance reporting system so that doctors will know um, what's going on. You can't doctor shop and go get um, opiates from one doctor and another and another. So there'll be, um, there'll be a way to keep track of that. Um, we allocated $15 million over two years to community health centers, rural health centers, and free clinics, uh, $18 million to improve North Carolina's child welfare program with new training and prevention programs, um, $3 million for additional foster care in the system. We actually have a, a, a big bill, and it's just starting the process of completely um, renovating, I guess you would say, our foster care system in North Carolina. Uh, one of our senators is a foster care parent and this has been her, her baby. She has just been a real advocate on behalf of foster kids. And uh, I didn't even know that foster kids were not able to go um, on overnight visits, spend the night away. They were not able to get a driver's license. They were not able to participate in sports. Well, we've changed all of that. Last, uh, last session, we had a bill that where that foster child living in your home will be treated just as your child. You have the privileges to, to allow them to do those things. So we're real proud of that. And the new bill will, um, is gonna be more regional, so it's gonna be uh, even better for our foster families. So we're proud of that. We did a lot of great work. We strengthened um, uh, laws against human trafficking. That's also a big problem in North Carolina that surprised me. Um, I understand High Point. Uh, Mecklenburg is the biggest, but I understand High Point is also um, a real problem. And uh, this, the, 
there'll be signs put up making people more aware how to report it um, who to get in touch with because most folks just don't have a clue that that's going on there aren't we aren't really aware of how to spot trafficking and how to know how to report that so we had some really good things going on as Jake told you um, we are we're in recess we did not adjourn and we go back on August 3rd and we go back again on September 5th we are going to have to deal with redistricting um, hopefully we won't uh, they're still saying that we may have to run again in 2017 one court said we didn't one court said we did so it, that's still in the court so uh, we may have election in November of 2017 but we don't know yet but we we hope that we will not but we will have to redraw the district so uh, 28 districts that they consider gerrymandered mine is one of them so uh, we will be redrawing those districts so that'll be part of the work that we'll be doing and we will be going back to override the vetoes that the governor um, has made since we left since we recessed and um, but I am honored to represent all of you and I uh, look forward every time you come visit me Brent comes to see me a lot he comes with your farm issues he does a good job Justin comes down a lot a lot of you come Dr. Martin the school board um, the commissioners I'm just delighted to see all of you when you come my door is always open call me when I can help you with anything that's what I'm there for I am there to serve you and I take that very seriously and I look forward to hearing from you with any concerns that you may have get in touch with me at any time Thank you again, and it's a pleasure always to be here. Thank you very much.